to the next speaker. I would really like to thank Siemens, who is our principal sponsor, who is presenting this Future Tech Congress. And I'd like to call on stage Pankaj Vyas, the CEO of Siemens, to come and give a few words. Pankaj, please. So good morning, everyone. Uh, very, very glad and honored to be here in the presence of quite a few distinguished members, my industry colleagues, and uh, who have made time on a pretty busy Tuesday morning for a very important topic that we're talking about over here. But before I get started, I would like to do a quick poll here. Uh, people who are more than 30 year old, can you just raise your hands? All right. I'm not here to sell insurance, so don't worry. <laughs> that, that's not the idea. Just wanted to get a sense of, you know, whom, whom, whom am I talking to? You know what? Just, just go, back, go back in the time when we were kids. What were our positions? I'm talking to a large section of people. I'm sure there were a few blessed ones who had more than this. But the real positions were a school bag, books in it, maybe the few old ones that our elder siblings had used, a pencil box, a luxury was to have an extra pencil box or maybe an extra color crayon or a nice smelling eraser. That's all we had. Fast forward, look at today's kids. You will not, it will be pretty difficult to find a kid in a large section of society. It will be very difficult to find a kid who doesn't, who's not playing with at least one gadget, not playing with video games. That's, that's what they possess today, not just school bag, not just the pencil boxes. Look at happened to, what, what has happened to us also as we grew up. 20 years back, two decades back, all we had was maybe an office diary, a computer sitting on an office desk, a watch, an old wallet in the bag or in a, or in a, in a pocket and that's pretty much. But today look at what all we carry at least one mobile phone, if not two. I have no idea why people carry two phones. I'm sure they have their reasons, privacy reasons. But that's that. Then we carry wireless earphones. We carry health gadgets to track our health. So we are also carrying a lot more accessories than what we used to carry earlier. At least 25 years back, what I remember, our shopping used to happen, our purchasing new things used to happen when there are major festivals around. Today, that's not the way it works. We are encouraged by a lot of e-retailers, e-coms, with a lot of discounts and we keep buying things. Same with food. If I have to talk about, for the Indian audiences, dal, chawal and khichdi was the thing and that's all. And now today you look at Swiggy and you have pretty much everything that you want to consume. Now on top of it, life expectancy was much lower. We are living longer. We are spending long time on this planet Earth than what we used to spend earlier. We are consuming a lot more. We are spending longer time on this planet. When I keep on saying we, how many are we really talking about? Last week, there was a very interesting piece of news. I'm sure most of people would have got that. We are 8 billion. And an estimate says we would be 9.7 by 2050. I'm not sure how good or bad that estimate is, but definitely we are 8 billion plus today. And a large section of that population is consuming a lot more than what it was consuming at least two decades back. What does this mean? Of course, as we talked about increased consumption, but does it stop at that? What does increased consumption lead to? Wastage. So when you, when you have people buying new phones and changing phones every year or every two years, what happens to the older ones? When we keep buying a lot of things that we keep changing, maybe be it clothes, maybe your footwear or any of the accessories that you're using, we keep changing those every few years or maybe few months for a lot of new, you know, ex, uh, the, the, the next gen generation. What does that do? That leads to a whole lot of wastage and where does that go? We are dumping that in our rivers, our lakes, our oceans. And we're not stopping at that. We're pushing all of that in landfill. 
what are we doing? I mean, just, just, just look at last three years. We have witnessed many fires. We have witnessed many floods. We have witnessed extreme heat. We have witnessed extreme winters. Signs are telling we are pushing the limit. We are really pushing the limit here, guys. Third thing, when you consume so much, when we all consume so much, all of us 8 billion plus, for that to be manufactured, you need energy. So your energy demand is going up. And more and more people, we need, to, we need to continue to work on electrification. That means there's more energy required. I'm not going to get into fossil, non-fossil, doesn't matter. But there's a, there's a huge energy demand that we are creating with, with what we have in front of us. It does not stop here. First time in the history that the large section of 8 billion people are living in urban setup, living rural setup for better life. First time in 2018, we have majority of 8 billion plus, more than 65 and people less than 5. I would say majority, but the more, more number of people are more than 65 than the people who are less than 5 year old. What does that mean? That's stressed infrastructure. How much can these urban cities take as they keep on getting stressed with this migration? What happens to healthcare infrastructure when we have a population aging at that speed and we are adding more and more to that? As we see, 9.7 is the, is the estimation. We, we have two options. One, we just keep watching this and see how things degrade and how we decay. Of course, we would die sooner, but Earth is also dying. That's what's happening here. And I think it is, it is every organization's responsibility. It's not just one organization, one nation, but every nation's, every organization's responsibility to do something about it. And the time is now. So the ambition that we share at Siemens to take care of some of these things, to address some of these things, not that it's going to address everything, but that's, that's a little bit that we are doing from our side. These are the targets that we are working with. We are aspiring to be net zero operations by 2030. As I speak today, 78% of the energy that we consume today comes from renewable resources across Siemens, be it manufacturing or all the operations. It's a, big, it's a big achievement, I would say, where we stand today. And we are not stopping at that. We are also looking at our supply chain, and those are the ambitions that we have. 20% emission reduction by 2030, and net zero by 2050. Now, the question is, What role can technology play? I mean, we are, we are at Future Technology Congress and we have to talk about that. What role can technology play? You know what, to be honest, might sound a little bit disappointing, but technology alone cannot solve this problem. Very clear. That's going to be absolutely misplaced expectation that just keep innovating technology and you're going to solve a problem. What we are really talking about is changing the way things are done, changing the workflows, adding the new workflows on every aspect. We heard about manufacturing, we heard about healthcare, supply chain, fintech, or anything you talk about, the way we produce products for consumption, the way we provide services for consumption. All of these workflows have to change. And that's an intentional change that we need to drive, moving from point A to B, an intentional change no surprises, is called transformation. So the need is not just about having new technology, but the need is transformation on how we do things today. And then technology enables that transformation. And again, no surprises, that's what we call digital transformation. But in digital transformation, digital is a small piece. Transformation is much, much bigger piece. It's really about mindset how we deploy technologies at right place. We'll talk about some of the examples here. 
I'm sure you have heard a lot about IoT, digital twin, edge compute. I'm just going to take two examples over here really relating to the two ambitions that we talked about, one being net zero and, and how, are we going, how are we doing about it? How, how are we deploying the right kind of technologies to achieve the results that we need? Here's an example. This is our 50-year-old factory in Kalwa, one of the regions in Mumbai, where we manufacture switch gears. This has, this had three manufacturing lines. We were doing 77 variants. Per product cycle time was 21 seconds. The number of quality checks that we were running were 22 per product. And we had to upgrade. We had to upgrade to have three times more production, three times more quality checks. So a linear approach of technology, a linear approach of pure technology application would have been, hey, you know what? This is what you're doing with three manufacturing lines. So that means you should go up to nine manufacturing lines. You need to go from 22 checks to 68 checks. Those are the number of checks we wanted to add in quality. The linear approach would have been, that means to stick to the same productivity and still meet the demand that you're talking about, you need to add more lines. That's a linear approach of applying technology. But what does the transformative approach say? It says, what more can I get done with this setup? And that's when the big challenge was a 50-year-old setup developed with the compute and the communication available at that age. Option, you could have thrown all that away and said, let's set up new plants. Let's add maybe 20 lines to do what it is. But that's where technologies like IoT and edge compute, edge compute really gives you an extension of a compute and communication to your old setup where you can make use of the new technologies which are in existence today. So that transformative approach, along with the digital twin, a very interesting application of digital twin, extensive application of digital twin that we deployed here. We took close to 18 months in this exercise, but we did not set up a manufacturing plan to try out how it's going to work. What we did with digital twin, we went ahead with virtual product designs, we went ahead with virtual production. We went ahead with virtual end product. Multiple cycles. What's the benefit of doing that? It's a zero wastage in this whole process. It's a zero wastage of energy. There's a zero wastage of material that would have gone in here. The end result, what we have today in this factory, you guys would, would love to hear this. Now we are supporting 200 variants, not 77. Three manufacturing lines have become one single line. Per product cycle time is cut down from 21 seconds to seven seconds. The number of quality checks that we do on per product have gone up from 22 to 68. We are able to produce 1.5 million products per year and twice the capacity spare, which we can use when the demand goes up. That's the power of digitalization. And it does not stop at that. We have built in a flexibility. In a single batch size, even a single variant product can be added without stopping the production line. Because that's what's happening. We know, we know the customer demands are changing. There's this whole lot of customization need. But Using the right technologies, not the linear approach, the transformative approach, that's what it does. Let's talk about the second example on the supply chain. We all can take a high ground saying whatever comes out of my factory is carbon neutral and I'm done because I did not add anything to it. I don't care what happened in the supply chain, but no, that's not, that's not what we do. That's not how we call ourselves responsible corporate citizens. So this is an initiative, this is a new solution that we have come up with, wherein you get to track 
every component's carbon footprint in the upstream, every minute component that goes in your product, what carbon footprint it's going to have. So when a product comes out of our factory, we know that there's a, there's a trail, there's a chain that one can look at and say, hey, there's not a single component that's gone in which has an unacceptable carbon footprint. Every component that goes in must be reusable once the end user decides not to make use of it and not go in the landfill. That's what we are working towards. That's an, another example of using the right technology. Then of course it doesn't stop at that as we, you know, as we just heard a few areas that we are talking about like, like Rishi just talked about that there are a lot more other areas. For us to make that carbon neutral, not for us, but in general for the society and the planet, we have to have a holistic approach across all the verticals and businesses. Now while talking about future technologies, it would be incomplete and coming from a Siemens technology, it would be incomplete if I did not show you at least few future technologies. That's why this slide is here. Now again, as I said, these technologies by themselves, they're very cool. The areas put up over there, they're very cool. But they, they are nothing on its own. So these technologies are cool and to make them meaningful, you need purpose. You have to have a very meaningful purpose behind adopting certain technology. And what can be a better and bigger purpose than saving our planet, our earth, our home? That's the purpose that we're talking about. Let's remember, probably today we can create a digital twin of Earth, but we cannot create new Earth. Probably we have additive manufacturings to create a sample of Earth, but there's nothing there that can help you create a new Earth. This is it, this is one. That's the place we live in. And when we talk about sustainability, if you go, and look up the meaning of to sustain, what does it mean? To sustain means to keep something or somebody alive and healthy. So when we are saying we need to sustain, we need to keep this place that we call our home alive and healthy. And it's not just government's job, it's not just policymakers job, it's not just industry's job. It's everybody who needs to come together here. So I would say, right in this forum, on this IET, FTC forum, be it industry, policy makers, academia, all, all technologists, we all need to come together to work on this mission, to make our home, to keep our home alive and healthy. And technologists, in my opinion, have two roles. One, of course, keep making advancement in technologies, finding new technologies but also work as transformation agents, help policy makers, help decision makers in industry so that they know what technology can achieve. So with that, I would say big thank you. And uh, this is a great platform. As you step out today, look around the booths, I'm sure you're gonna see many of these technologies out there. Please do ask a question, what are you doing to save our home? That's where we will start. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.